Okay, so so far on the course, we've looked at the Epiphany Rising, the Glendower Revolt, and the Percy Rebellion. In this video, I'm going to quickly talk you through the Scroop Rebellion, um, which there's not much written about. Um, however, it's probably one of the plots that pose the biggest threat to Henry's reign. So last time out, we looked at the Percy Rebellion, uh, in particular the Battle of Shrewsbury. Um, you know that Henry Hotspur was killed at the battle, uh, and that that battle and that plot essentially broke the Percy family. Or did it? You'd be forgiven for thinking that that was the last time we saw Henry Percy, Earl of Northumberland. Um, of course, he wasn't at the Battle of Shrewsbury, but with the death of his son and, and his lands and stuff being taken, it's unlikely we would see him again. Not the case. In 1405, he appears again. This time, however, he's come with new friends. He rebels again in 1405, this time joined by Richard Scroop, Archbishop of York, uh, who came from a leading northern family with close connections to the Percy family. Uh, this was along with Archbishop, Archbishop Arundel of Canterbury, um, who at, at the time had welcomed Henry to the throne. Now he called on the citizens of York to rise against taxation, uh, maltreatment of the church and corruption. Another key figure in this plot uh, was 19-year-old Thomas Mowbray. Uh, he was Earl of Norfolk at the time. Um, it was said that he joined out of resentment at the way he'd been treated uh, and the way that his father had been banished and ultimately died. Uh, he was the previous Earl of Norfolk. So in terms of the rebellion itself, uh, Scrope and Mowbray managed to raise an army of maybe eight, 9,000 townsmen and country people just outside of York. Of course, it wasn't an impressive fighting force, um, but we can assume that they were meant to link up with Northumberland's seasoned army. Um, Henry Percy, however, failed to move to York to support his allies' support. Just out of interest, just as a question to think about, is this the first time that Henry Percy, Earl of Northumberland, has failed to turn up to a battle? Or is he making it a bit of a habit at this point? When this revolt began, uh, Henry IV was campaigning in Wales. Of course, he's still locked in this dispute with Glyndwr. Uh, 1405 was in the midst of it. You know, he's, he'd suffered some heavy losses at the hands of Glyndwr. However, when he heard of the revolt late in May, he moved swiftly towards York. This, of course, isn't the first time we see Henry IV act quickly. Uh, when he hears about the Battle of Shrewsbury that's going to take place, he moved his forces in there very quick to help his son, Prince Hal. So, was there a big fight? Lots of people die, uh, much like the Battle of Shrewsbury? No, not at all. On May 29th, uh, Ralph Neville, who was the Earl of Westmoreland, um, one of the most powerful figures in the North, he arrived at Shipton Moor, which is the area just outside of York, to talk to Scroop and Mowbray. It was said that they met amicably, amicably to begin with. Um, they shared a wine um, and he assured them that their feelings and, and their complaints were going to be heard. Uh, however, at this they told their men to go home and were then astonished um, when Westmoreland had them seized and shut up at Pontefract. So Archbishop Arundel, who you heard me mention previously in, this, in the video, uh, he hurried north to plead for clemency but it was too late. Scroop and Mowbray were condemned to death by a hastily organised commission of the King's support, um, Westmoreland being among them. They were paraded through the streets of York. Uh, Scroop himself was mounted on a mule, facing backwards, uh, and then beheaded just outside of the city. Uh, Thomas Mowbray, um, the young Earl of Norfolk, he suffered a similar fate. He was also put to death at the hands of Henry's forces for his involvement in this rebellion. But where's our friend Henry Percy, Earl of Northumberland? Well, unbelievably, somehow, once again, he lives to tell the tale. Um, and it's not for another three years until he finally meets his end. Um, he must have had a lucky rabbit's foot or something in his possession because he was one lucky man in Henry's reign. So you know what caused the rebellion? Um, there were grievances against excessive tax, um, the perceived treatment of the church and the clergy, um, and much talked about corruption w within the king's household. The Ames, well, they just wanted Henry off the throne. Uh, in terms of how they intended to do that, well, it was going to be with this assembled force. Um, whether or not they had intentions to put Edmund Mortimer on the throne, it's not entirely clear. 
Um, but it, what is clear is that they did not want Henry to be king anymore. Was it successful? No. They were betrayed, in a sense, by um, Westmoreland. He tricked them, arrested them, uh, and it was ended quite swiftly. Late May was when Henry got wind of it, and by 29th of May, they'd been arrested and they were executed within a couple of days. Now, this is a rebellion that there's not much written about. Um, however, we will go into it in more detail in the lesson. Um, we'll look at some of the finer points of the rebellion and consider why it posed such a threat to Henry. One of the things we will look at in the lesson, um, that's just a question for you to think about over the weekend, is why would the execution of Scroop in particular have been seen as such a big deal in this time? 